Hi, today we're looking at a practical workshop on heat loss calculations and we've been given a building and here are all my calculations. I'm going to try and get through these as quickly as possible. But first up, we're looking at what heat loss is. Well, Q is your total heat loss and PV represents the P represents heat transfer. V is ventilation heat, um, heat transfer and F is for fabric. So that's like you built your walls, your windows, etc. OK, so what we need to know for that is when we get to ventilation, we need to know sort of heat capacity of air, because if you're transferring air in and out of a room, um, you need to know how quickly that sort of how, how much the heat is transferring in that air. Well, actually, um, that value is a physical constant and is set depending on how much gas is in there, obviously. But standard standard air is um, 0.343. So I've written that there. OK. Um, when it comes to U values, uh, when we're looking at our fabric, so how much heat um, the fabric is containing or, or allowing to move through depends on the U value. Now that's your heat transference through material. Now your U values can be different depending on your windows, your doors, etc. But I've got them here, the ceilings that, the floors that, and the walls are that. So I've actually found that information. Oh, and the windows and blinds as well. OK, so I found all that information through. Um, so you can get the U value um, by doing a calculation. Now, you need to see a previous video about that. However, uh, once you have those U values, again, that's fairly simple as long as you've got them for each element. And then for the element, you need to know the cross-sectional area because your, um, your U value is how quickly it moves through that material. However, you need to know how much of that material it's going to move through. So you need the cross-sectional area for that. OK, um, N is number of air changes per hour. That goes back to our ventilation. So when we're looking at how much heat is lost through ventilation, we need to know how many times that room is getting replaced with air. So actually, how many times air changes per hour? How many times does that whole space get changed of air? <laughs> so um, SIBC, Charters Institute of Building Services Engineers, they are amazing for um, knowledge on guidance um, on how to sort of what values comfort requires so for you to be comfortable in a living room situation what they're saying is you need the air to change within that living room once per hour okay one air change per hour that's that value there okay um, the volume room volume you can calculate that quite easily um, and then temperature difference I go back to SIBSI my beautiful SIBSI um, guidance when you were talking about the internal air temperature, they say that they recommend that we should have 23 degrees Celsius in a living room. That's what we should design our um, air temperature to be if we can. Now, you might disagree. You might think that 23 is a bit higher, a bit low. Um, this is what the guidance states. So this is what we normally design to. You can change that if you wish. And again, um, external and ground temperatures. So we need to know how much tra heat is transferring between the ground and our air in our room. We need to know how much air um, heat is transferring between outside and inside. Um, and that all depends on Met Office statistics. So all the data from there, um, I have determined that actually I found during the winter, um, the grounds and external temperatures are very similar. They, they sit at about eight degrees Celsius. Obviously, you get colder days, you get warmer days. So but this is this is all based on stats. OK, in my region, this will change. You can change yours. Just think about what you want to be modeling for your um, heat loss because you are modeling for your radiators. So do you want the coldest day or do you want the average coldest day? OK, so think about that. OK. Um, so moving on to areas. So I look at my floor area because I need to know how much heat is going to transfer through that floor to the ground. Um, I look at my glazed doors and my windows and I put them together because actually the windows and the glazed doors have got the same U value. So I'm going to keep them together. So how much heat is going through those elements. I've got the area of that ready to go into my calculation. And then I look at my walls. So I look at my two lots of walls, ones that the doors are on and the ones that the windows are on. And I find out how much actual wall is this heat going through or getting or coming back through. 
and that's my total wall area. OK, and then my volume is specifically for the ventilation heat loss. I need to know the, vent the volume of my space because I need to know if I'm changing all of the air in that space once per hour, how much is that going to be? Yeah. So once I've got all that information, I literally plug it in. It's as simple as that. Uh, PV is um, my specific heat capacity, which I've determined, my number of air changes I've determined, my volume I've determined, and my temperature difference between outs uh, outside and inside, which I've determined. Lovely. So I can just plug that in. And then fabric again. I've got my U values for my three different elements, my floor, my glass and my wall. So I separate them out. I've got my area for my floor, my glass and my wall. So I put them in as well. And I've got the difference in temperature between the floor, the glazing and the wall outside and inside. OK, and um, and then I get my fabric heat loss there. Absolutely fine. And then all I do, do is add them together. So it is as simple as that. Uh, there's a couple of things. Um, I am making assumptions that um, internal walls and internal ceilings so right here i'm looking at this dining room living room upstairs i've got the same spaces above me so there's i'm assuming that um the temperature above me or below me is going to be comparable it's not going to be a big huge difference so i'm not going to work out my heat losses through those spaces especially the and, and in including the internal walls the only time i'd be worrying about internal walls um, giving me heat losses etc is if I had a garage maybe or if I had um, so this storeroom if this storeroom was like a cold storeroom where it was kept really really cold yes I'd probably lose some heat from a dining room wouldn't I into that storeroom however in this case I'm not worrying about that so all my internal spaces are not going to lose me any um, heat loss or gain me any so I do not include them at all however you might want to do that OK, um, so that's that. And then just a little bit on where I get my information from. So there's apps there um, MS NHS radiators. This is an app where they just you just plug and play. You plug the information in and it gives you your heat loss for that space. So you can size your radiator quite easily. Um, then I've got moving on to my Met Office data here. So this is just a mean maximum temperature. You can get there's tables, there's charts, there's all sorts of useful information you get from the Met Office. Um, and then on to my Sibsi Guy Day 2019, my guru, <laughs> my <laughs> go to for everything. Um, Sibsi Guy Day, love it. It's got all this information there that, and more. So um, comfort criteria. So that helps us set our design temperatures. OK, um, that's all, folks. Thanks for your time. Um, take care.